Hi guys, today I want to talk about the SIG P320. Um, I recently switched over to the P320 from a Glock 19 for my everyday carry. And shortly after getting my P320, uh, which I have absolutely fallen in love with by the way, <clears throat> I soon found out about the uh, many lawsuits and the controversy around whether or not the P320 is safe to carry. Um, in this video, I wanted to discuss the reasons why I think that the P320 is safe to carry. And that being said, you should never carry a firearm that you do not trust. And I do encourage you to do your own research and make your own decisions about whether or not you trust the P320. Now, there have been a lot of lawsuits against it. And to be honest, I think most of them are bogus. Um, for the first part, they all seem to be coming from police officers, uh, having pistols that are just going off on their own in the holster. Uh, surprisingly enough, this doesn't happen to civilians nearly as often or to people in the military, and you would think that it would happen to them more often due to the lack of training and comparison. Now, that being said, there are a lot of reasons for someone to file an illegitimate lawsuit against a gun manufacturer like Sig Sauer. This includes money for both attorneys and the people filing suit, uh, lack of personal accountability. Maybe if it's a law enforcement officer, they don't want to face the consequences of having a negligent discharge, uh, potentially including the loss of their career. Uh, it could also be something as simple as gun control activism. And uh, with that being said, I did want to go over the reasons mechanically why I think it is impossible for a SIG P320 to go off in the holster without a trigger pull. So to start, this is clear. Now in the P320, there are multiple points that have to fail in order for this pistol to go off without a trigger pull. On the firing sear, or on the trigger sear, my bad, there are two edges. Both of these have to fail for that striker to go all the way forward. The one failing is not enough. And additionally, there is this safety lever here and this safety lever, this safety lever pushes down on this plunger right here, and the striker cannot go forward unless that is depressed. And I can demonstrate that. It will not go forward. The firing pin is not protruding. Now if I push that down, the firing pin will protrude. And it looks like for it to function properly, this has to go down about halfway. Now, that being said, the only way for this to possibly get depressed and allow that firing pin to go is by pulling the trigger, which does lift that safety lever. Now, there was a video done by Grey Wolf Armory uh, over on YouTube where he was talking about the way it would be possible for a P320 to go off uncommanded. Uh, and essentially what he came up with is that the trigger only had to travel one millimeter in order to lift this safety lever enough to disengage the firing pin block. Now, I disagree with his verdict and I think that his approach was not very sufficient. And I'm not s trying to say that he is incompetent as a gunsmith. Um, I don't think that at all, and nor am I qualified to make such a claim. That being said, I am going to give you guys my own observations on this. Now, the reason I think his approach was less than sufficient is because when you're looking at the pistol like this, this firing control unit has no interaction with the grip module at all. 
there are multiple points of contact on this firing control unit that interface with the slide. And the fire control group behaves much differently and the trigger behaves much differently when this fire control unit is attached to the slide than when it is not. And that being said, it is more important to me to look at how this behaves when it is attached to the slide to really figure out exactly how far this trigger needs to travel in order for that safety to become disengaged. And uh, so to do that, we're actually going to try it. And we can actually do that by just sticking it on there the same way we would as if we were assembling the pistol. Which is a little more difficult to do without the grip, I will admit. And right now, if I push this back just like this, this slide is cocked. This is in the exact same state the gun would be if the grip was on it and this gun was in battery. Now also from this view, you can actually see down in there, and you might not be able to see it on camera, but you can actually see the action and you can see that lever depress that safety block plunger. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this here and I'm going to physically look at it and I'm just going to push on the trigger and the trigger actually gets to about here before it even starts to move that safety lever. About here is where the safety lever makes contact with the plunger. Now, if I push it just a little further, it will actually depress that plunger, and the amount of uh, pressure that is required to depress that plunger is almost just as much as the pressure required to release the sear and uh, release the striker, uh, which makes it very difficult for me to actually hold the trigger on that spot where the safety is disengaged and the and the striker is not released, uh, especially in this coordination. And also, I don't have the tools to measure uh, exactly just how far the trigger has traveled. So by doing this a lot, I've actually been able to identify each stage of the action just based on the trigger pull and this time I've actually uh, got it stuck in that spot and I am holding a substantial amount of pressure on this trigger with my thumb. You can actually see, maybe not with this lighting, I'll turn the light down, you can actually see my thumbnail turning white from the amount of pressure that I am exerting on this trigger to hold this in an unsafe state and just a little extra pressure and it fires. Now, because I don't have the tools to measure this, I'm actually going to put it back on the, on the grip module and I'm going to do a dry fire with this where I can basically do it by feel since I can't visibly see what's going on there, but by feel I'm able to physically identify each wall in the trigger pull when it makes contact with the safety lever, when the safety lever makes contact with the plunger, and just before the, the gun fires when the plunger is depressed. go ahead and put this back together.
and I am by no means a gunsmith. Uh, this is 100% based on my personal observations on and research. Um, and like I said, I do encourage you to do your own. But now that we've got this fully assembled, and it is working, I always do double check that because uh, when I first got this pistol, I always managed to mess up the reinstallation of the FCU. So I do double check to make sure the gun is still working, but it is. So we'll go ahead and try that trigger now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a graphite pencil to actually mark the current location of the trigger. which is right there. And I'm going to slowly pull the trigger until I feel each wall. Okay, so there's a wall there. This is when the trigger assembly comes into contact with the safety lever. So the safety lever has not moved yet at this point. Okay, just a little further, and now the safety lever has made contact with the plunger. Okay, now just a little more, and this is hard to hold. Now, okay, right here. This is where the trigger is depressing that plunger, and just a little bit more pressure is going to release the striker. And that is right here, just a little further. And just a little more pressure, and the gun fires. Now I'm going to measure each of these spots. With calipers. Now, and this is set to millimeters. To make contact with that safety lever requires 3.2 millimeters. For the safety lever to make contact with the plunger, requires 5.1 millimeters. And for the gun to actually have depressed that plunger to the point where it can fire, I can work calipers. Is right around six millimeters. And in the past, I was pretty easy on this trigger this time. Uh, I do have a hard time getting it all the way to the point where it is fully depressed. In the past, I have gotten a measurement of about 6.5, but I don't think that that 0.5 is too significant to my demonstration. Now, like I said, these are just my own observations. I'm not a gunsmith, um, but these are the reasons why 
I do trust my P320 and I do continue to carry it. And I do encourage others to do the same while also doing their own research and not to carry a gun that they do not trust. And also remember at the end of the day that safety is ultimately at the hands of the owner and is not the responsibility of the firearm. Uh, you need to make sure that you are following safe firearm handling practices and that you're using a holster that is made for your gun. In a lot of these lawsuits, we don't hear anything about what type of holster was being used, what the officer was doing, and quite honestly, I do believe that most, if not all of them, are just negligent discharges. Um, I have a, and this is a fairly inexpensive holster from We The People. Um, it's a $50 Kydex holster, and I mean, it's sturdy. I have 100% faith that I can push on this as hard as I want, and I'm not touching that trigger. So, that being said, stay safe and have a nice day.